Welcome to dealing with materials data. Uh, we are looking at the collection analysis and interpretation of uh, data from material science and engineering. We are in the third module. This is a module on probability distributions and we have looked at several discrete probability distributions and we are now going to consider one of the uh, continuous probability distributions which is called as the normal distribution. As the name indicates it is a very common one and it is also very important one for several reasons. So, we are going to spend quite a bit of time understanding normal distribution and so in this session we are going to look at one aspect of normal distribution namely that uh, many a times if you make measurements because of random errors or uh, thermal noise the value that you would measure repeatedly if you make the experiment will not be the same number. Uh, the error will actually make it uh, get distributed as a normal distribution. So, this is the context in which we are going to understand normal distribution first. Uh, we will look at other contexts and also the importance of normal distribution and uh, we have been using uh, normal distribution in some cases earlier. So, we will even uh, revisit some of those and try to understand what we did and why that uh, makes sense in the context of understanding normal distributions. Let us consider any measurement that you are making. Uh, let us say that x is the measurement and let us say that the mean value of the measurements uh, after you repeated uh, the experiment some n number of times is mu and let us say that the standard deviation of the measurement is sigma. We are assuming that the reason for deviations from the mean is the random noise. So, this rules out data such as grain size distribution because we saw that you can make a measurement and the measurement can give you a mean and a standard deviation, but that might be because of some other distribution that is there in the system. It is not because of random noise, so it is not related to um, the normal distribution it need not be related to normal distribution. We have also seen in the in the previous example for example, uh, that uh, mixing two or convoluting two um, distributions can result in some other distribution. We saw that normal plus hypergeometric actually gives you binomial and so on. So, normal can also be a result of uh, some other distribution that is not the case that we are looking at at this moment. We are saying that if you have some uh, random error or noise or thermal noise, uh, that will lead to a normal distribution in the measurements that you make. And we say that x uh, goes as normal distribution uh, with uh, mean mu and standard deviation sigma. And uh, we also define what is known as standard normal distribution uh, for which uh, the, the mean becomes 0 and the standard deviation is 1. And you obtain from x the z by doing the transformation that is you take all the measurements and subtract the mean and divide by the uh, standard deviation, the resultant variable will actually follow the uh, standard normal distribution. Normal distribution is uh, mathematically known as the Gauss function and here is its uh, probability distribution function. It is 1 by sigma square root 2 pi exponential minus x minus mu whole squared by 2 sigma squared. So, this is the normal distribution. Mean of normal distribution is mu and standard deviation of normal distribution is sigma. So, that is how we actually build this distribution. And standard normal distribution we are going to replace uh, sigma by 1 and uh, mu by 0. So, and, and the variable um, is x minus mu by sigma is going to become z. So, it is z squared by 2 and 1 by square root 2 pi. So, this is the standard normal distribution. Typically, it is uh, uh, referred to as uh, z. And how do we work with uh, normal distribution using r? Uh, norm is the keyword. So, d norm, p norm, q norm, r norm uh, will give you the probability density, cumulative distribution function and quantile function and random variates. And uh, let us assume the mu to be 20 and sigma to be 2. Um, can we get the um, so uh, as we did earlier? So 
let us look up norm right. So, okay, that is not the norm we want d norm. So, mean standard deviation is what you have to give right. So, if you want to have mean to be 20 and standard deviation to be 2 and so you can plot, so let us make x, um, let us say it goes from, uh, it is a sequence and it goes from 0 to um, some 50 thing. So, you can say x uh, d norm x comma mu comma sigma right. So, this is the uh, standard uh, um, the, the, the normal distribution and uh, you can of course uh, uh, make the cumulative distribution function that is just by changing it to p norm. And the, here is the cumulative distribution function. So, for quantiles we have to make sure that the sequence runs from zero to one. Okay, so let's say that we want to say q norm, and that is in terms of y. This is y. So here is the uh, the the quantile function. And, um, and of course, if you want to generate random variates, so you have to say R norm and you have to tell how many random variates you want. Let us say we want 20 and the mean is mu and the standard deviation is sigma. So, we have R norm. So, you can see that they, these are values um, which are centered around 20 and the sigma is uh, 2. So, it will be between 18 and 22 is 1 sigma and 16 and 24 is 2 sigma. So, that is how these values will be distributed and of course, you can uh, make a histogram plot of uh, this uh, norm and see that. Okay, so, you see that, but if you generate more and more uh, random numbers and you will see that it is becoming a a nice uh, bell shaped curve right. So, let us say that we want to make some 1000. So, you can see now that it is a very symmetric curve uh, about 20 and, uh, and a standard deviation of uh, 2 right. So, things are between um, 18 to 22 and uh, 16 to 24 most of the measurements would fall. So, you can make uh, more and more nice looking um, the, the normal plots by generating more and more random numbers. So, this is uh, one aspect. So, now let us go back uh, to normal distribution and uh, so, like I mentioned normal distribution in the context in which we are talking about is also because of uh, errors uh, that you see in measurement. And we have already looked at one example of conductivity of ETP copper and we are actually plotted and we also tried to figure out what distribution it is and we showed that it is normal distribution. Now that we know the probability distribution function for normal distribution, can we take that data and plot it and also get the um, do a simulation of uh, random variates from normal distribution and compare the two. So, that is what we want to do in this uh, exercise. So, for that I am going to use this set of commands. So, here is the script. Okay, so, we are going to read the data um, on ATP copper conductivity and mu is basically the mean. So, let us calculate from the data and sigma is the standard deviation. So, we have calculated from the data 
and z is a random variate uh, from a normal distribution we are pulling out some 20 numbers with this given mu and sigma and uh, z z is basically the probability density function using z that we have calculated and so we have made a data frame out of this uh, um, simulated values that we have got so we are going to make three plots first is of course to take the data and plot it as a histogram. So, we are using ggplot. So, this data is x and aesthetics is uh, take x as uh, conductivity and make a histogram, right. So, that is what, uh, okay. So, there is a problem in reading the data, okay. So, so this is the um, distribution you get and it says something about bins, uh, pick a better value with bin width and we can do that. So, so you can give bin width let us say um, 100, so sorry. Okay. So, you can make this and you see that this is the distribution that you get. Um, of course, next you can do the plotting of the um, So, this is the um, same mean and same standard deviation, but we generated the, the data. Uh, so, it is a basically a simulation uh, and, and we are going to plot it as a line. So, this is the distribution that you find. Of course, we can put them both together in the same plot uh, that is uh, ggplot allows you to do that. So, let us do this. Okay. So, you can see that these are the data that we measured and this is the simulated distribution that we are getting and uh, of course, here again it is complaining about So, you can see that we have plotted both on the same plot and if you generate more and more random numbers, so you will also get a distribution which looks like this. Of course, the total number of data points we have is very small. Uh, we have uh, only 20 data points and it still shows a nice uh, um, normal distribution. That is because in this case uh, truly the, the mean value or the actual value of conductivity is somewhere quite close to. Uh, where the mean value is and all this uh, distribution that you see is because of the errors. So, this is uh, uh, one of the most important reasons why we are interested in normal distribution. Random errors are always distributed normally and that is what is going to allow us to do lots of analysis as you will see and we are going to derive lots of distributions uh, from normal um, and, and we are going to use them also to understand data. But there are other uses for a normal distribution in, in, in material science and engineering. In general, everywhere you will get to see normal distribution, but there are certain specific things uh, which are uh, very relevant to us. One of them, for example, is that normal distribution is related to error function and uh, diffusion typically uh, gets uh, solutions uh, which are error function. So, so diffusion problems is uh, one of the problems. And it is a stochastic problem. So, random walk of atoms is what leads to diffusion and so it is it's a naturally a stochastic problem like nucleation. It is one of the other important stochastic problems. And so, we will look at uh, um, error function for example in the subsequent uh, sessions. We also had this uh, probability scale that is based on normal distribution. So, we will try to understand uh, probability scale. We tried to identify the uh, distribution, uh, empirical distribution of a data, uh, whether it is normal or log normal or variable or things like that. So, that also is based on the normal distribution uh, at some level. Uh, so, we always use normal as the sort of benchmark for understanding other uh, distributions. 
uh, skewness and kurtosis for example is basically to tell how much the distributions uh, deviate from uh, some of the properties of uh, normal distribution in terms of symmetry and in terms of tails and so on. So, we will look at uh, all these uh, aspects uh, one by one and, uh, and understand normal distribution in uh, uh, greater depth and we will do all that using R in the sessions to come. Thank you.